The Carolina Panthers made a surprising move on Monday, cutting projected starting nose tackle Marquand McCall. So why did they do it? And what did we learn from preseason week two? We'll talk about it right now on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Friday of this week and next week, I'll be right here answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter, at Julian Council, to get those questions into me now. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the Carolina Panthers head into their final week of the preseason this week as they face off against the Detroit Lions on Friday evening at Bank of America Stadium. And one week from today, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 29th of August. Carolina Panthers will have to cut their roster from 90 all the way down to 53. The initial 53-man roster initial is the key word as the roster is ever-changing and ever-evolving. And we certainly found that out on Monday as the Panthers made a shock transaction by cutting defensive tackle Marquand McCall, who... Entered camp as a rejected nose tackle when the first unofficial depth chart came out a week ago. He was a starting nose tackle. Preseason week one against the Jets, he was a starting nose tackle. But on Friday night, he only played 18 snaps and was not the starting nose tackle. But you wondered, okay, well, it's not like the starters on defense played that much anyway. This is McCall just getting a starter's treatment. Well, turns out that was not the case as he lost his starting job and Also lost his job here in Carolina as Frank Reich went to the podium on Monday before practice talking to the media saying, those are tough decisions. We appreciate his contribution. Honestly, we're doing it now because we think he's going to be in a roster somewhere. It just comes down to two things. It comes down to a fit for us and what we're trying to do. And then we've had a couple guys at that position who have really looked good. So we wish Marquand the best and appreciate his contribution. Bravion Roy getting cut wasn't surprising. John Penasini having to be let go because of injuries wasn't surprising. Marquan McCall getting cut is a shock. Certainly after the way he performed last season, out of camp, making the roster, playing in 16 games, and being a contributor as a depth piece on that defensive line when Matt Rules coached in, when Steve Wilkes took over, and then coming into things, it sounded like with his body type and the Panthers going through a base 3-4 system, he would be an ideal fit. And Mike Kay, the Charlotte Observer, asked Frank Reich about that. Hey, McCall seemed to be in a good spot to make this roster, not just make the roster, but to start for this team. Like, he was an obvious choice two weeks ago. What happened? Frank Reich said, I think it's just an overall fit. Listen, I personally felt like I had a personal connection with Mark Juan and loved the individual and loved what he's contributed. And I believe he has the talent to be on a 53-man roster. I believe he will be fine. But we, as a staff, are collectively, and with general manager Scott Bitter and his staff saying, what are we trying to do? There's a lot of moving parts, so sometimes tough decisions need to be made. All right, so Mark Juan McCall, and I guess we don't really have what he's listed at anymore since he's not on the Panthers website. I just, I'm I'm surprised by this, y'all. When I saw that, when I tuned in for the press conference, I did not expect to hear that news. I guess it was put out there right before, and I hadn't seen it yet for a guy who was able to contribute last season for a guy who has all the size and the makeup to play in this defense. I'm just a little confused. I do understand that the Panthers brought in um, Deshaun Williams and they also brought in shy Tuttle, shy Tuttle, who's going to start uh, alongside Derek Brown, however, they want to utilize these guys. I understand that those three 
were always going to be kind of the key guys there on the defensive line, at least to start off, at least Derek and Shai Tuttle. Then Henry Anderson, who's been dealing with an injury, and who knows how long he's going to be out, and if he's actually going to make the roster now, uh, he was someone who was brought in again after coming in right before the season last year against Cleveland to be able to set the edge and stop the run. So those four, he felt like they were all going to be on the roster. Then Marco McCall was kind of the clear fifth, especially after Bravion Roy was let go. Penasini started on Pup and then was let go. They brought in Taylor Stallworth. Haven't seen a ton of him. He's been running mainly with the twos. It seemed pretty obvious that McCall would be on the roster, but I guess not. And the message that Frank Reich said this sends to the roster is that one preseason game can impact where a player standing is on the roster or elsewhere. So you can go from being the starter one week and then you could have a guy like Raekwon Williams go out there and have three tackles, two of them solo, one sack and one tackle for loss and really be an impact player against the Giants like he was on Friday. And you can go from being the projected starter, the presumed starter by everyone, to being out on the street and hoping to get picked up on waivers by another NFL team, which I believe will be the case. Now, another thing about this that's just so surprising is it's not like the Panthers have a ton of depth there on a defensive line to where you're Fine letting go of a player like Marquand McCall for just he's not an overall fit. If you have a strong personal connection and you felt like he was contributing, I'm kind of surprised by this. Did he get outplayed maybe on Friday by Williams? Where I'm not there at practice. None of us are there at practice every day able to see what's happening. But I had not seen anyone out there reporting with all their play-by-play that's done via Twitter throughout the preseason and training. I had never seen anyone go out and talk about how Williams was outperforming Marquand McCall. By all accounts, McCall was a starter. And McCall is going to make the roster. So I am just stunned by this move to come out here and do that on Monday going into the final week of preseason. Now let's understand this too. Scott Fitter, and we talked about this on uh, the show Friday night, whenever you would listen to it, either on Saturday or Sunday, or maybe on Monday, breaking down what happened week two of the preseason. Um, Scott Fitter was on with Taylor Zarzer and Steve Smith, senior on the broadcast locally. And he talked about, hey, after this game, we're going to go out there, we're going to look at our numbers, and we're going to decide how many guys at certain positions we want to keep. And based off of the conversations that they had, either on Saturday or Sunday, they decided that Marco McCall was no longer in their plans, that they've seen enough from LeBron Ray, who was brought on the roster after, I guess it was two or three Mondays ago, when they decided to uh, wave Bravion Roy. He's someone who impressed them enough to where possibly he's going to be on the team. Of course, Raekwon Williams coming off his performance on Friday night has impressed him enough to where Marco McCall is no longer on the roster. I just, I did not see this one coming, and it's, Got to send a message to everybody that, hey, you you might think you're a starter, you might think you're safe, but you have to perform each and every week or you could be like McCall looking for another job. And if he thinks McCall will be on a 53-man roster, I'm just understand, trying to understand why he is not on this roster. Ray has never played in the NFL. He hasn't played a single game. I was looking over at the stats um, from Williams. He's played in seven career games. McCall's played way more than them in only one year in the league than those two guys combined. So it's just interesting to me that they would make this decision when it's not like there's that clear cut defensive line talent that's available with Henry Anderson out and in having younger guys like Williams, at least inexperienced guys like Williams and Ray now potentially stepping into a spot on the 53 Brown has plenty of experience talent. You look at what you have and try Tuttle plenty of experience talent. Deshaun Williams fits this scheme perfectly. And outside of them, what do you have? So we'll see whether this was a good move uh, in due time. But I, right now, am really, really surprised by what happened here and trying to figure out whether it, if this was the right decision. So I guess we'll see what it looks like the rest of the week and on Friday and then get to next week on Tuesday and see what they decide to do. If they are going to keep some of these guys like Williams and like Ray, who I guess have had a, a roster spot opened up for them as Mark McCall is no longer a Carolina Panther. Now the ensuing move was to add veteran cornerback Troy Hill, who spent 2015 through 2020 in Los Angeles, who was there in Los Angeles at that time with the Rams. Oh, that's right. Jonathan Cooley, the cornerback coach here, and Ajero Averro, the new D.C. Uh, we'll be interested to see Hill if he steps up to be one of those backup corners. We have not seen guys like Rajon Wright, who I had projected and some other people had projected to make the 53 as UDFA at Oregon State, have not heard much out of him. And outside of Keith Taylor and outside of uh, C.J. Henderson, who can you really depend on at outside corner? Stan Thomas Oliver is seen as a backup to um, Nickelback, now um, Jeremy Chin. And he's, of course, more of a special teamers. 
utilizing another outside corner would be important. Troy Hill is someone who could come in and maybe take that role. But as we've seen, we have no idea who is actually on the roster after the Carolina Panthers decided to cut Marquand McCall. A uh, few other updates heading into Friday night's game. The starters are once again going to play on Friday. It could be less, could be more as far as the offensive starters go. But Frank Reich says that they want to establish a rhythm, and they certainly need to, as Bryce Young has only thrown a total of 12 passes through his first two preseason games and getting to play five combined series, which I think in total he plays. he's played about 28 snaps so far in uh, the preseason. Need to have played more than that going on for the on Friday, you would think, heading into week one on September 10th. Uh, a couple of guys who did not practice on Monday, Dante Jackson dealing with an ankle, Stan Thomas Oliver. Greg Maben, Mac McCain, two, three guys. We're not quite sure what their status is. Jordan Tom, Thomas with a hand injury. Austin Gorbett still on pup of the ACL. Cade Mays with the neck. Cam Irving with the ankle. Deontay Brown uh, undisclosed. Same thing with Stephon Sullivan, who's missed the first two preseason games. Terrace Marshall still dealing with that back. And Henry Anderson with the foot injury. But the good news was Miles Sanders was back out there after dealing with a groin injury the last two weeks. That kept him out of the Jets and Giants preseason games. Back in full pads. Still TBD on whether he'll play on Friday. And I'm someone who doesn't really feel like that's all that important, considering what you've seen out of Chuba Hubbard, who also was back in action after suffering an ankle injury on Friday, missed practice on Sunday, but he was back out there. You got you already have players too, like Raheem Blackshear, who's impressive on Friday night, and Spencer Brown, who's trying to make this roster. So Miles Sanders don't really need to see him play at all in the preseason, knowing that he's going to get a pretty big load this upcoming year here in Carolina. Derek Wright with the knee, important for him, someone who looked good. Battling from those back and wide receiver spots with Javon Wims looked good against the Jets. One of the few offensive bright spots that afternoon. He's now back in one good preseason performance like we've seen could lead to making the roster here in Carolina. Andy Dalton with the back was back out there as well. And Eddie Pinero has been dealing with the groin was out there. Looks like Matthew Wright will once again kick um, on Friday night here in the preseason. So some quick updates as Mark McCall is no longer a Carolina Panther here. And, of course, Carolina. So what do we learn from preseason game number two? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and much more. The game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress of game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL fell for $20 off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed so what did we learn on Friday night as the Carolina Panthers dropped their second preseason game and as I've stated who really cares about the actual score but the result of how the players individually play and as a team how they play obviously is important as Carolina Panthers are only three weeks away from their week one matchup against the division rival Atlanta Falcons. And there is a sense of urgency to be prepared come week one, knowing that it's the Falcons in week two on Monday Night Football. Is the New Orleans Saints coming to town here in Carolina? Two divisional games cannot start 0-2. 1-1 and would be fine. And, of course, 2-0 and would be the preferred outcome for the Carolina Panthers. But they got a long ways to go to end up being 2-0 and following the first two weeks of the season. So what do we learn? On Friday night, coming out of that preseason game number two, well, one thing I definitely learned on Monday and kind of should have known on Friday is that this roster is up in the air, y'all. You and I and a lot of people may have thought that Marco McCall was a shoe in to be on the roster. Well, clearly that's not the case as he's no longer here in Carolina. And there's some other players who you might be looking at right now and think, okay, they're going to make the roster for sure, who probably aren't necessarily all that safe. I've wondered about guys like Justin McCray, who was brought in here by James Campen. He's been with Campen back in Cleveland and Houston. He's come in, and I've not been impressed by what he's done when he stepped in at right guard uh, with the ones back against Jets and what he did as a number as one of the backups on Friday night. Dude has not been impressive. Is that someone who the Panthers really can trust? 
going to this year as a backup um, have players like Michael Jordan. I mean, I don't think he's gonna make the roster, but is he going to make the roster cam Irving who missed on Friday, who should be the swing tackle. Is he a guarantee to be on the roster here in Carolina? And how about some of the other guys that we've kind of thought were going to make it like Stan Thomas Oliver, who's been a clear special teams guy. Is he safe? I don't know who's safe anymore after seeing what happened to McCall. So the roster heading into this third and final week, it's up in the air. And Scott Bitter, when I talked about it with y'all earlier, and he spoke to Taylor Zarzer and Steve Smith Sr. on the local broadcast on Friday during the third quarter, and he was talking about how they're going to figure out how many guys they want to keep. They're also defining what roster positions are up for grabs this week, what battles are going to occur. We're going to find out because this Friday night, the dress rehearsal for the offense and for the defense, it's really a great opportunity, the last opportunity actually for everyone to go out there and to ensure that they are on this roster come 401 next Tuesday afternoon. So things are still in flux. And the only guarantees for sure, that Bryce Young's on the roster, uh, Brian Burns, Derek Brown, and maybe like 20 other guys. But now it seems like maybe there's 30 jobs up for grabs after seeing what happened to McCall. Probably not. They, they probably still know about like 45 of the positions um, and who's going to be on it. But there's probably a little bit, may, maybe eight still open. I did not think that there was one open there at nose tackle, but I guess there is now. Um, the second thing that we learned is that the offense still needs a ton of work. It, it looked clunky to start off. They had a first and five after getting the uh, Giants to jump offside um, on that opening drive. Then Bryce steps back, gets pressure up the middle, has to run out, makes a smart decision, not trying to force the ball over to Thielen or Chark, gets out of bounds for one yard. Second down, Chandler Zabali gets blown up there by Leonard Williams. They get one yard on the rush temp. And then third down, again, pressure up the middle. Bryce moves over to the left, tries to connect there with Jonathan Mingo. Doesn't happen. And that's your third three and out in the first four drives by the first team offense. Now the second time out, they did better as they were aided by 25 yards of penalties by the Giants. But once they got into the red zone they imploded with their own penalties as Iki Aquanu couldn't help there with the sacks and then you saw Sharon Lizabala was called for a hold as well so the Panthers offense still has a ways to go saw some good things as far as the run game Chuba Hubbard who looks like he'll be the number two back I think uh, <laughs> never know now and saw some great things um, from Jonathan Bingo who was in there to help spring Chuba loose to the outside there on the left side as a, as a run blocker there at wide receiver he came in also on that Third and short before Hayden Hurst had the false start where he was going to be in there to help out with the run. Then you saw him be able to take a hit and take that for 15 yards. So good stuff from him. Also looking at Adam Thielen and Bryce Young having that connection for the first down. Bryce still looking poised with the offensive line. Iki Kwanu, who we talked about on Friday, we need to see more. because So far, his first two games have been really poor, especially considering the standard that he played at for the large part of last season and all the talk coming out of training camp of how he had taken the next step. We have not seen that. We certainly need to see that against Detroit, who I know they got Aiden Hutchinson. I have to look the rest of the roster, but I don't think they have the defensive line talent that you've seen in New York with both the Giants and the Jets the last two weeks. So we need to see Ike Quano step up this week. Bradley Bozeman had some trouble there in the middle with Dexter Lawrence. Not surprising in a way because, hey, he does struggle sometimes with pass pro. But he is good when getting downhill in the run game. That's his one weakness in an area that he needs to clean up, in an area the Carolina Panthers have to be better at, especially in the interior, as that's where all the pressure has been so far, even from the outside as well. And Intero Moten got a little banged up, but looks like he's fine. That offensive line need to see them take another step forward, as that's going to be their last opportunity to really be physical until that September 10th game down I-85 South against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, third, defense. And a finished product. We talked to Jordan Rodriguez, the athletic, who covers the Los Angeles Rams and is familiar with this defensive staff, like Jero Vero, the DC, Jonathan Cooley. And she talked about how it takes time. And once things get figured out with this 3 4 scheme that Vero want, runs, it's going to be like a living organism. Everyone's going to be on the same page. And I think the communication on the back end will be good with Von Bell and with Xavier Woods. I still think that when healthy, J.C. Horn, Dante Jackson can be really good for this team. And Jeremy Chin is in a perfect position to make plays. And I like the inside linebacker depth. I like what they have in Brian Burns, like what they have in Derek Brown. I think this can be a good unit. But we saw without Brian Burns, Justin Houston, and Marquise Haynes, your top three pass rushers, the Carolina Panthers, not able to get any pressure on Daniel Jones and just get absolutely picked apart on that opening touchdown drive for the Giants. And it was alarming. But even without getting pressure, they still can't get picked apart like that by Daniel Jones and the Giants. Now, any quarterback with all that time will be able to make it happen. 
with the starting secondary, you might expect a little bit more there. So it's going to take some time. I like with the offense, the last two weeks been the first time they've been out there in a game setting together. Same thing with the defense. While there might be a lot of familiar names, as we know here in Carolina with some new pieces coming in, and it's still pretty much the same guys. And those guys should be able to be familiar with each other, but they're trying to learn this new scheme. So that's going to take some time, not a finished product. Hope to see better performance from all around with the defense on Friday night. Then the last thing I feel like we learned, Matt Corral, is probably QB three if they're keeping three quarterbacks. I think they are, but I don't know. I've kind of gone back and forth on this. My dad called me on Saturday morning being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought I thought you were saying Corral didn't have it. Wasn't in. I still don't think Matt Corral's a very good quarterback. I still don't think he has much of a future here in Carolina, but it's become apparent to me that this coaching staff and Scott Fitter as well is giving him every opportunity to learn and grow and to be QB three. And if he shows enough, which I felt like in the second half, there on Friday night, he kind of showed enough for the Panthers to stick with him and to keep developing him. Then he'll be on the roster. Do I think he'll ever start a game? It's possible, but I would hope that wouldn't be the case because that would mean just the worst possible scenario for the Carolina Panthers. I don't. I never loved the draft pick of Matt Corral. I think it was a bad decision then. Still think now. What's the point of keeping a third quarterback? He'd have to be on the initial 53-man roster. Then, yeah, he wouldn't count against them as far as the inactives go on Sundays. But the only way he plays is if Bryce and Andy Dalton get hurt. And if you get the Matt Corral on game day, but Bryce and Andy Dalton out, are you feeling good about it? No. Is any team in the NFL feeling good about their third quarterback? Probably not. I just don't look at the incentive to have a third quarterback to be all that enticing considering what it would take to get there and how you're probably screwed if you get in that situation in the first place. But looking at the scenario here and the situation, we did get to see a little bit of Jake Luton through a touchdown pass in his opening drive. I guess we'll get to see a little bit more of him again on Friday, but they're giving Matt Corral all the opportunities to be the guy who's going to be the QB three. So Matt Corral is probably on the roster, I think. Who knows? Maybe they decide not. But Matt Corral, good night for him. Best night as a Carolina Panther. Looks like he's clearly QB3 heading into the final week of the preseason and probably this time uh, next week on Tuesday past 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So who helped themselves on Friday and who hurt themselves as they head into the final week of the preseason? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for the draft or scouting a waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So, with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see what Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Looking for a player to take in fantasy football drafts who will spark his new team's offense and also help you speed to victory? Then use a luxury pick on Jaguars wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Ridley has looked sleek during his first camp in Jacksonville, is ready to rev up once again after his time in Atlanta, taking full advantage of riding of rising star quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay guaranteed fitting over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay guaranteed fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be just set up for success from the get-go. With eBay guaranteed fit, everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check, get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at eBay Motors. Dot com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Looking back at Friday, let's talk about some guys who helped themselves make the roster and some guys who hurt their chances of making the roster. Let's start off with the positive. Who helped themselves? Now, Chandler Zavala, after being drafted in the fourth round at NC State, was likely always going to make the team, you would think. But again, after what happened to McCall, Hard to believe that anybody's safe other than like a couple of guys, but I think he was always going to be safe. He was able to step in as a starting right guard on Friday night, playing every single snap with the ones and held his own. Scott Fitter said it on a broadcast that he looked good. He did give up a pressure there 
early on um, that second down that only lets one yard rushing for Chuba Hubbard. And then later on was called for a holding. But outside of that, Chandler Zavala was no worse, no better than anyone else out there on the offensive line and seems to be the guy who's the favorite to start at right guard until Austin Corbett comes back healthy off the pup list with that ACL tear so suffered back in week 18 last season against the Saints. So Chandler Zavala certainly helped himself to be able to claim that spot. Now, I wonder if maybe Nass Jensen out of North Dakota State, who's someone that the Panthers coaching staff has spoken highly of so far, if he gets an opportunity with the ones. But I did think it was interesting to see that he was not out there after last week where you saw um, on three different series, you got to see Michael Jordan at right guard, just McCray at right guard, and then starting off as a starter there, you got to see Cade Mays. That was not the case on Friday night as they stuck solely with Chandler Zavala there at right guard, leading me to believe that he is the favorite and probably going to be the starter there. I think, I know, maybe, we'll see. A Shai Smith trying to battle to be on the roster as a wide receiver. It seems pretty clear to me. DJ Chark, Adam Thielen on the roster. Also would throw out uh, Jonathan Mingo, of course, who had a good night, and we'll get to him in momentarily. Those are your top three wide receivers. Those are your top three starters. Then I think Terrace Marshall, who's now dealing with a back issue, who knows how that works out, but he's someone who the coaching staff, I guess, wasn't enamored with as they decided to go out there and draft a similar profile. And Jonathan Mingo, who's a little bit more physical, though, but a player who was a second-round pick two years after Terrace Marshall was a second-round pick here in Carolina. And then LaVishka Chenault, there's been some good things said about him. But we have not seen LaVishka Chenault being used in that Debo Samuel kind of way that people keep asking about because he's not Debo Samuel, but hasn't really got a lot of run, I think, any run with the one so far. Of course, that will change. They'll show far more things. They're not going to be vanilla like they have been so far in the preseason. We'll get to see more of it in the pre in the regular season. I just wonder how much of it. So the Panthers want to keep six wide receivers if they do. It would seem that Shai Smith would be the guy. Had a good second half there when Matt Corral also started playing better in the second half after struggling in the first half. Shai had about one, maybe two drops. That was something that played him last year when he won the number three wide receiver job out of camp. Couldn't hold on to it because he couldn't hold on to the football when thrown to him. I thought he had a good night on Friday, particularly in the second half, and has put himself in position to hold off guys like Javon Wims and Derek Wright for that final back-end spot there at wide receiver, Matt Corral, another guy who helped out himself on Friday, his best night as a Carolina Panther, as I mentioned then and a moment ago, thought he finally looked poised, looked like someone who could potentially operate an NFL offense, still has a very long way to go to feel any sort of confidence about him if he got called upon during a regular season game that actually mattered and had consequences. But looking at what he did against Washington and New England last year and then last week against the Jets, that was the best performance for Matt Crow to go from a poor performance against New York to build off of that, learn from his mistakes, and then to go out there and to improve after having a shaky first half, improving in the third quarter. That's exactly the kind of development that you want to see out of Matt Corral. So he's positioned himself right now as QB3 if the Carolina Panthers do want to indeed keep three quarterbacks on the active 53-man roster heading into the season. Raquan Williams clearly helped himself with those three tackles, two of them solo, one sack, one tackle for loss, as he is still here in Carolina, and Marquan McCall is no longer. And as Frank Reich said when speaking to the media on Monday, the performance of guys behind McCall is the reason why McCall is not is one of the reasons why McCall is no longer here. Look directly at Raquan Williams, who was wreaking havoc in that second quarter for the Carolina Panthers in the first half of that game on Friday night at New York and Jonathan Bingo. I think it was already clear that he was going to be wide receiver three just based off of, well, the unofficial depth chart, which maybe not official, but there's things there that actually mean something. And I thought that meant something. Clearly, McCall being a starter did not mean anything. But Mingo being a starter meant something as he started last week. Started again on Friday night. Got to see him make a play, breaking a tackle there and getting a 15-yard gain. Then being a factor in the run game. Good sign from Jonathan Mingo. Liked what I saw from him and think that he could be a pretty good contributor for the Carolina Panthers heading into the 2023 season. So those are the guys who helped themselves, the guys who hurt themselves. Well, obviously, Mark on the call because he's no longer here in Carolina. Uh, but Justin McCray, I am really wondering, is he a certain team to be on the roster? Probably. It just, it's not like the Panthers have a ton of options there on the offensive line. I just have not seen enough out of him or even Michael Jordan to feel totally confident in their ability because he has a pre-existing relationship with James Camp and the O-line coach here. It seems pretty obvious that he'll be here. I just would like to see more out of him moving forward, heading into Friday night. And in the last one, I'm looking at Eric Rowe, 
who helped himself last week, but then gave up that touchdown where he was just looking in the lights, could not find the football as uh, Jalen Hyatt, the uh, draft pick out of Tennessee who lit up the SEC last year, a guy from, I think, Irmo, South Carolina, so from the Carolinas, went out there, had that touchdown, could be a big threat for the Giants this year. Um, McCray, or no, Eric Rowe, rather, didn't help his cause. And now seeing the Carolina Panthers going out there and signing a cornerback in Troy Hill, does he take one of those defensive back spots? And now you see a guy like Eric Rowe not make the roster as he is slotted as a safety currently on a depth chart. That's something to watch heading into week three of the preseason as the Panthers face off against the Detroit Lions Friday night uptown at Bank of America Stadium. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays, this week, I guess, and next week, the next two Fridays, I'll be answering your weekly Friday mail bag questions either at me or DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council. To get those questions in to me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday.